So this video is about how to import a set into Maya. And what I've got here is I've got a run cycle uh, with Monty running along the ground uh, and he's wearing a top hat um, and I'm thinking well what shall I do with this? What's Monty going to do? Why is he here? Uh, what's he doing? You always want your animation to have a story if at all possible. And one way of creating a story, of, of sparking your own imagination in effect, is to import a set from somewhere else. Uh, and one of my favourite websites, um, which I have shown you before, is TurboSquid. And I'm going to go uh, to TurboSquid now um, and uh, get hold of some 3D models. And here it is. Uh, and it has a very powerful search engine where you can search for, let's say, let's search for a set and see what comes up. And you'll see that there are a number of sets that we can choose. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, if I scroll down, I can see all kinds of things here. Um, and if I filter it through lower prices here, uh, then I'm going to get all the free stuff first of all, and then only later will I start to get things that I need to actually pay for. Um, you can use anything which is a .ma file or a .obj file. So obj is a file. Anything that's in Studio Max, you, you, you can't open, but you can register with Autodesk to get 3D Studio Max for free as a student. And then you can open these files up in Studio Max. And then once you've done that, you can export them as an, as an FBX file. That's FBX file. And, and an FBX file is openable in Maya. Because Autodesk own both 3D Studio Max and Maya, they have created some compatibilities between the software. So you can open a Max file, export it as an FBX, and then open it up in Maya. Uh, you can't do it with rigged, um, with, with, with rigs, it, it won't work, but it will work with geography. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, um, uh, surface topology is what I'm trying to say. It will work with 3D models. And you can always add um, uh, a little filter down here. So compatibility, I can click on Maya, uh, and that will change these search results. So I only get the things that are either .ma or .obj files. So here are some nice sets. Um, uh, uh, one, we, you can also change the, um, not all of these are uh, going to be useful to us, but here's a nice table and chairs, uh, all kinds of things really. Looks like some sort of play area here with swings. That might be quite fun. Fair, that could be really nice. That could be a, a really good, interesting um, children's playground kind of thing. Uh, you could also uh, change the search engine, change it to street, see what comes up. I'll just um, go ahead and search there. And then uh, you'll see all kinds of different sets that come up uh, there. There's some uh, buildings uh, which you could download. Uh, there's a, a subway station, which I'm, I've am i used in the demonstration of the tutorial. This is a really excellent little set, uh, very nicely modeled. Um, and you can also uh, type in a house, all kinds of things. Different searches will, will obviously pull up uh, different results. And again, these are all free. Um, uh, I highly recommend you can make a, a collection of these. And then um, in order to uh, download them, you simply click on the... Uh, um, on the result here uh, uh, and go to uh, download. That's the green button there, download. You will have to register at TurboSquid. Once you've done that, save it to your uh, desktop folders, save it to um, uh, your, your sets folder, SETS, and then go to import. And I'm going to go to desktop, um, Alex, teaching, Assets. I keep all these things in my assets folder and then SETS. So here we have all sorts of different um, uh, sets that we can go for. Uh, let's try a uh, stable yard. I think there's a nice stables in um, Turbo Squid. Um, so you can always go for that. So here's, here's my stable yard. Now, uh, the first thing to notice here is that it's obviously far too small. So I'm going to go to the outliner, window outliner. Uh, there's my stables. Uh, and I'm going to change the scale uh, to 5 and see what that does. Okay, that's starting to look decent. Um, and now I've got Monty uh, running along. Uh, and actually, if I just move the stables out of the way, I've got Monty running along 
in this sort of funny little farmyard thing. And here's my, um, this is my um, uh, ground plane. I can select that again in the outliner. Uh, looks like that's a, there we go, that's a separate plane. Uh, so I can go to uh, scale, let's say 300 on that. And I will make my ground plane much, much larger. And let's move that so that it starts to cover the. Uh, I can even I can also scale it so that now it covers the whole thing. Uh, once I've done that, the only thing I have to do now is to start making it all look pretty. So if I go to my camera view, that's there. Now that's obviously not a terribly nice camera view, so I might want to. Uh, change that. So I, I go back to my outliner, select the camera, uh, drag the drag select these values here, then go to unlock selected because I've previously locked my camera. Uh, and now I can do whatever I want with my camera. I can I can change it, fool around with it. And I've actually set keyframes on this camera so there we go. So now let me see what that does. There we go. Now there's you can see there's some slipping on the feet on Monty, but uh, uh, that's one of the hazards of run and walk cycles is that does that does tend to uh, happen. I'll just turn on the nerve, off the nerves curve so we can see him a little bit better. And now once you've done that, you could go ahead and if you wanted to. Uh, throw some simple lights on it. Remember, we we there's a uh, little tutorial on simple lighting, three point lighting, uh, in week one, and you could light that and then do a batch render. Uh, and I'm always in favour of these things, putting in a set, uh, adding a little simple lighting, and doing a simple batch render because I think that that way you get a more finished, polished look to your animation, um, and hopefully you can get into the idea of telling a little story. So that's the basics of importing a set into Maya. It's essentially the same as importing a prop or indeed importing any kind of geometry. Very straightforward uh, and there's a huge uh, uh, huge amount of resources out there. I've been taking you to Turbo Squid because it's personally my favorite website but there are many others where you can import free geometry and sets. But make sure you credit the creator of the geometry when you put it on your demo reel. You, know, you don't want anyone to think that you modeled these things yourself since you didn't, so you always want to credit at the end of your reel. Credit where it's due. It's a good professional work habit, uh, and people will uh, like you and thank you for acknowledging their hard work.